hi there um i just wanted to talk to you i mean we're, we're back to the beakers <laughs> um for our um god i can't remember the name of the company yet. sweet bee organics <laughs> that's right sorry lost that there for a minute so um yeah it, everything is taking so long to dry out at the moment um i mean god when did i make these i made these days ago didn't i and it's just so damp and cool that uh, even though I've had like a little radiator on in the studio and everything, they are just taking forever to dry out. But anyway, they're getting there. So now um, they're kind of, they are at properly leather hard stage. And the other thing um, is that I've, I've actually put the white slip on. Can you see? So I've refined the rims now and thinned them a little bit. And then that's the, the, the actual white slip that I put on. Um, is is actually quite thick so what that does is it um, it just kind of adds a little bit of thickness back to the rim um, and covers up any little you know scraping marks and stuff which is good uh, yeah so what we do with them next is we put on what I call um, I just call it like a lime wash I haven't actually got a finished one here to show you but it's sort of um, similar to this so this is a terracotta one um, and it's just like a little wash of white that just reveals the detail. Um, but obviously, because these are being once fired, they're being raw glazed. Um, I have to find ways of achieving, um, you know, the same surface treatment effects that I would have got through doing two firings um, just by using one firing. So, yeah, one of the things I've come up with is this kind of lime washy thing, which I can do while it's leather hard. And I just wanted to talk to you about that a little bit, because all it is, is watered down white slip. So it's, it's the same white slip that I've used on the inside. But I mean, I've just I've just literally watered it down until it's quite runny and thin. And so what that does is it catches in all the texture in your mug. Um, and that's what you want but normally like you would probably put on a vitreous slip afterwards and then sponge it back to get that effect of it settling into all the little dips you know on a relief surface but obviously because we're only firing it once i need to get a similar effect without that extra firing so if you just water down your slip um i think this is i mean it just it's really hard to say like exact amounts if you um if you, I mean, this is kind of two, uh, one part slip, two parts water, but you know, you, you can't say that as a definite recipe because it depends how thick your slip is in the first place. And my slip was quite thick. So, um, and actually today I just like topped it up a little bit with some water. So don't, don't use that as an absolute recipe, but it is a starting point. You know, you want it like the consistency, I would say like, I hardly, I want to say single cream, but I hardly ever use single cream. I always get double cream, so I don't really know. But maybe, maybe like single cream. It's like definitely thicker than water, but yeah, it's just kind of pretty thin. <laughs> and also don't forget, if you're using um, watered down or any thin slip, uh, you, you, you are obviously introducing a lot of water to the surface of your clay. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily have much success if you were using a red clay. Um, so the only reason that this kind of works is that it's a buff kind of clay. If it was a red clay, you would kind of apply your, you'd apply your watered down slip and then, um, you know, you, you would just be kind of, um, what am I trying to say? You'd just be like bringing up the color of the red clay, you know, into your slip with the brushing. But because, Obviously, the buff coloured clay is, is quite a similar colour to the white slip. If I am doing that a little bit, like you just don't notice it, it's fine. You just, you'd never know. Um, so I hope that makes sense. So if you're using watered down slip, stick to your buff coloured clays and your white clays. Um, and it will work perfectly well. Um, I mean, you know, you might get something. You can do it on, you can do it on, on red clays, but sometimes, you know, you just got to just try these things you've just got to try these things and also the brush is very important the type of brush that you use like you want to avoid all sorts of um any brush with like a bit of a spring in the um 
in the bristles you know it's got to be a really floppy soft brush can you see how my brush is just actually just flopping around as I turn it and um, that's perfect it's and also a brush that is really absorbent that is going to just gather up like a mop you know it's going to gather up all of that liquid clay and just be held in the bristles um, you know because you don't want to have to keep dipping it and dipping it you just want quite a lot a mop of a brush to just slosh around on the surface I hope that makes sense um, so what I'm doing is um, I'm just going to do the bottom bit first let's get my glasses on get my specs in the right place so I'm just doing the bottom first and then I'm just really lightly um, working my way down the surface on the top and I just want it to get into all the little crevices you know all the little sort of relief texture I really want you know the whole point is that it, you get it in there so that that's where it's going to sit and and sort of highlight that texture and reveal that texture even more it's a bit messy you know I'm making a right old mess here I just want to make sure there's no weird puddles anywhere or dribbles give it a quick oh there's a bit missing there a little dribble like that and then um, I'm just going to put these upside down, being very careful, just do the bottom once more, not to damage the rim. I mean, I've got to put it that way up because the bottom hasn't had time to dry, so I can't put it the other way up. And my, you know, my white slip on the inside is already dry, so it's kind of OK to put it that way up. But when you lift them, you do have to just check that you haven't damaged the rim afterwards. Um, so I'm just going to leave these to dry for a little bit longer because now I put all that sloshy slip on that it's going to make the clay, it's going to soften the clay a little bit. I've got the heater on in here, it's bloody boiling actually, um, but I mean I don't know what else to do, I've got to get them dry, it's nuts, they're just not drying. So I'm, I'm just going to use the heater and wait um, and then later on I have got to get these glazed and done, I just want to get these finished um, today. So. Later on, I will show you the last bit, which is the raw glazing part of the whole thing. And then, and then we're done. Then they can just try and go in the kiln. I'll speak to you in a minute. Mm -hmm. 